Well, welcome back to the next section. In this section, we're going to talk about drum set technique. We've already spoken about the ability to play good time, and uh, that is so important. Timekeeping is, of course, king as a drummer. So next to that is technique. So this is the second section. What is technique? This is a question that I've asked several times. What is technique? Well, of course, we know if somebody's got bad technique. We know if someone's got good technique. What do they do if they've got good technique? Well, of course, they make it look easy. They look like when they're playing the instrument, that it's so natural. And that goes for the same with anybody who's good at anything. You look at Tiger Woods. Now, I'm a terrible golfer. So when I hit a golf ball, I hit it all of 100 yards with maximum effort. And it's, I hit it as hard as I can. And it's, uh, it's wrong, I know. But um, hey, uh, I'm not a professional golfer. But if you look at Tiger Woods, he hits the golf ball 300 yards plus. And how does he do it? Well, he makes it look so easy. And for me, certainly when we're playing the drums and on the practice pad here. Hopefully, um, what I'm going to convey to you over the next section then is uh, drum set technique, how I hold the sticks, a couple of basic rudiments and a couple of exercises to practice that I use all the while, which will hopefully make you as well, uh, make the whole lot, the whole process of playing the drum set easier for you. Okay, let's work on now the eight basic stickings that we're going to be using throughout this DVD. And these stickings, in fact, come from what I consider to be the Bible of drum set technique, or certainly um, practice pad technique, if you will. Uh, stick control for the modern snare drummer, uh, written by George Lawrence Stone, who was uh, incidentally uh, the teacher of uh, Joe Morello, who I was very fortunate to um, study with um, some while ago now. But um, absolutely fabulous um, snare drum technique and uh, I certainly learned a lot there. So the stickings that we're going to be working with are single strokes, forwards and backwards, so obviously right hand lead, left hand lead, double strokes, right hand lead and left hand lead, and the four combinations of the paradiddles. So firstly, the forward paradiddle, sticking is right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, Inverted paradiddle, so with the doubles in the middle. So right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left. The reverse paradiddle, so starting with the doubles. Right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left. And finally the fourth combination, right, left, right, left, left, right, left. Right, right. If you keep saying these stickings all day, you actually go slightly mad. But uh, anyway, this is the fourth combination. So right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, 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 right. OK, so I've introduced now the basic stickings that we're going to be working with throughout the DVD. So let's now look at, um, well, firstly, let's get back to basics. Let's look at how um, I hold the drumsticks. and. It's really, really simple. I don't use any pressure at all, or hardly any pressure, or I'm trying to, um, not to tense up too much. Um, yes, I play traditional grips, so obviously you can see the left hand is very different to the right hand. Um, I do occasionally play uh, match grip, and the grip with the knuckles on top, um, just for education purposes, is, uh, a lot, is often referred to as um, German timpani grip, and similarly, using thumbs on top, that's uh, often referred to as French timpani grip. And uh, French timpani grip, actually, for me, is all about fingers. It makes it slightly difficult to accent, so um, I sort of favor the certainly the knuckles on top approach, German timpani grip when holding the sticks. So as I said, then, it's very relaxed. I'm just feeling the, the stick very loosely. Let's look at the right hand initially. So when I hold the stick, it's literally as if somebody has handed me the drumstick, hand on top, and I'm gripping between, we refer to it as the fulcrum or the pivot point, between the uh, first joint of the index finger, the pad of the thumb, and there's actually a little bit of um, second finger as well, gripping the stick, but certainly the last two fingers, little finger and uh, third finger, are allowing the stick to um, rebound, and uh, that's finger control, which is another thing. There's various facets to the technique, obviously using full arms, using wrists, so German timpani grip, as we said, knuckles on top, allows me to pivot from the wrist, and also 
the fingers for the fine detail there as well. Traditional grip, well, where did that come from? Well, I believe it came back to the, um, it goes back to the snare drummers um, years and years ago. Military snare drummers used to have the snare drum around their neck. So, of course, it was at an angle. So they had to find a way of being able to play the snare drum using traditional grip, uh, using any grip, um, so that they didn't actually impede on the drummer next to him. So if we use match grip, that would be the case, wouldn't it? So, and of course, the drummers were the first ones in the war. They were the, they were the front line without a machine gun, the crazy drummers going out there first. I never quite worked that one out, but uh... right, let's look at the exercises. The first exercise which I'd like to share with you is using the eight stickings again, and this is an endurance exercise that um, is called FAMPS is what we call it, and uh, what we're going to do is simply play the, um, for our purposes, I'm just going to deal with the first, one, the first three stickings, so singles, doubles and parallel, so sticking one, three and five. Sticking number one, obviously just the single strokes. And I should just say as well, when I hit the drum, I'm only really making one motion, which is down and I'm allowing the stick to rebound. It's not two strokes. So just throwing the stick down on the drum, play one bar of 16th notes, so 40 and uh, we finish with the left hand. I then play a repeat just on that hand. So it sounds something like this. Quite dull on the practice pad, I appreciate that, but so the idea is actually to make each hand sound as accurate as possible. So here we go then, single strokes. And I play the repeat then just on the left hand. Let's go on to the double strokes. Again, it's going to be finishing with the left hand, right, right, left, left, so on, throughout the uh, period of a bar for 16th notes. It's going to finish with um, the left hand. So again, we're going to play the vamp now just on the left hand. And after a while, you can really feel the rebound with the stick, the stick bouncing, the stick's working for you. You're not working the stick and obviously tensing up, which is something we really want to, want to avoid at all costs because that really impedes again on the feel of the music. Um, paradiddle, sticking number five. Again, that finishes with uh, a left hand. How does that work? Well, a little like this. Every time you finish with the right hand, and that will be the case with sticking number two, so the left hand lead for the single strokes. You play a vamp with the right hand. So throughout the eight stickings, that's actually really a really good endurance exercise, a good technique for building up just um, basic, what we call chops. So a good target to get to for that exercise is around about 100 beats per minute. Um, that's what I try and start off at and then build it up from there. And just be aware that when you are playing the vamp as well, you really are feeling the rebound. It's a little bit like bouncing a ball, bouncing a a very bouncy ball. The more bouncy, the better. Okay, moving swiftly on, let's look at the next exercise using stickings one, three, and five again, singles, doubles, and paradiddles. Um, we're gonna do an exercise now that I call a substitution exercise, and now for, uh, this gives me a lot of uh, freedom for um, soloing ideas. It's based on a six stroke roll. And what we're simply gonna do now is substitute every right hand for this sticking. Right, left, left. Every left hand is gonna become right, right, left. So, a single stroke roll, right, left, right, left. We substitute every right hand for right, left, left. Every left hand for right, right, left becomes a six stroke roll. Right, left, right. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, so on and so forth. You're probably thinking, what? Okay, hopefully it's gonna become a little bit uh, more easy to grasp. We're gonna try doubles now, so how do we do it? Well, again, we're substituting every right hand for right, left, left. So two rights become right, left, left, right, left, left. Every double on the left hand becomes Wait for it. Right, right, left, right, right, left. 
So double strokes then turn into this. Right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left, right. And then finally to paradiddles gets more interesting again. As we know, the basic sticking for a paradiddle is right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. So we substitute every right hand again for right, left, left, every left hand for right, right, left. And then the paradiddle becomes this. Right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right. Up to speed, you get some really interesting um, patterns going now. And obviously you can transfer it to the drum kit where you're putting um, bass drums with every single, um, with every cymbal crash for the single strokes and the other doubles interior notes onto the snare drum. Sounds like this. So the single strokes become this, as you remember. Every right hand is right, left, left. Every left hand is right, right, left. I'm gonna run now Sticking number one, sticking number three, and sticking number five, back to back, singles, doubles, and paradiddles, so you can get a flavor of um, how this will sound up to speed. This is the third exercise now. This is the, an exercise called fill-ins, and uh, what we simply do with this exercise is fill in the beats between any double or more beats on one hand. So we can obviously can't do this with single strokes, so we start with the double strokes, which is sticking number three, and then we work through the paradiddles. So there's six stickings to work through. Um, so first of all, double strokes, right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left, becomes this. Right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left. All I'm simply doing is adding a beat in between the doubles with the other hand. Um, let's look at the um, paradiddles then. So right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. What I'm doing now is I'm gonna add a stroke from the opposite hand in between the last of the three, third and fourth beat of the um, paradiddles. So. So if we just run exercises two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, um, straight the way through there, another medium tempo. Um, by the way, when you are practicing these exercises, I really do recommend using a metronome as well. Um, absolutely vital. I'm not using one today. It probably would sound like Chinese water torture listening to it on, a, um, on the recording here. But for practice purposes, please, please, um, I strongly recommend a metronome. So exercises three through eight. So it's double strokes and the paradiddle combinations using the fill-ins. Right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left, right, right, left, 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 right, right, left, left, right, left, left, right, right, left, left, right, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, paradiddles. Inverted paradiddles. So that was exercise six. Exercise seven, backwards uh, paradiddle. Right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left. And then the fourth combination, exercise number eight. Right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, right. So let's run all of those up to speed then and show you what you can actually get out of these exercises. It's a great control exercise and really works out wrists, fingers, and basically the whole artillery that you have available to you. So um, right then, up to speed from the uh, double strokes through to number eight, the uh, final combination of the paradiddles. Sounds like this. And just one other exercise, just for um, completeness, which actually is in Stick Control, the book there, um, just for clarification. We can actually do a sticking where there's four beats on each hand, so. 
that will sound something like this using the fill-ins again. Um, left, 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 right, 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 left, 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 and up to speed. And it sounds something like that. Okay, we've focused on um, hand technique a lot. We've been concentrating on obviously developing facility with the hands. Please do not forget about feet as well. All of these exercises can be um, played with feet alone. For those of you that play double bass drums or use double bass drum pedals, absolutely. Um, these exercises are great and uh, work very well um, with the feet also. Don't neglect them, it uh, really is. Um, another important uh, part of the armory, and of course, we could probably make a whole another DVD just based on the, uh, the feet alone.